folks, this is Mary, AKA Mercy Triumphs, and this is my channel, Slow Crochet. You have found me on episode 015, and this is the penultimate episode of the hashtag Deck the Halls collab Christmas in July 2023 collaboration with Kim the Crafty Nomad, Ella from No Catchy Name Crochet, and Terry of the Yarn Joy podcast. So if you've been following along every Monday in the month of July 2023, we have been posting ornament ideas and links to free patterns. And we wanted to get you a little bit in the Christmas spirit early in order to curtail some of the stress that often will come when we leave all of our handmade items to be done right at the last minute. So that is what I've been doing. I have been trying to get ahead of the game and make a bunch of ornaments of the same type so that once it actually is Christmas time, I'll be able to do things that I'm enjoying making, not quickly rushing to get a lot of things together. I do tend to host several different events during the Christmas holidays. And so I wanted to make enough of a particular type so that I could distribute them to the friends that come to my holiday tea party or holiday cookie exchange or things of that nature. So my theme has been kind of a woodland holiday idea and I've been taking inspiration from Thea Ritter's book Scandinavian Style Christmas Knits. So we have done some stars, we've done some hearts, and now this is actually this is kind of a two for one this week. We're doing my favorite! My favorite little mushrooms. So in this book, she has different styles of mushrooms that you can uh, customize. And she, uh, I think she put some little beads on top for the, the dots on the toadstools. So where is the crochet equivalent? Well, thankfully I've been aware of this pattern for mushrooms for a little bit of time. I was introduced to them by one of the most fantastic artists that I know of, and she actually gifted me a beautiful garland of these mushrooms. And I had just I had to ask her what her pattern was, and she told me. And so anyway, these have been in my little studio space for a while. I brought them down so you guys could see them, but these are actually more the scale, uh, what the pattern calls for. And as you can see, um, Miss Amy up a tree did a beautiful colorful top She did the bottom with the little foot and the gills She stuffed them really nice and full and she actually did an extra little trim around the edges So this was my starting off point I'm excited to put this back up because I've just been waiting to film and show you guys for those of us that are more inspired by nature in general Mushrooms have kind of always been a thing, right? It's not like nature ever really goes out of style so the pattern is by In the Yarn Garden, and I will link it below, and I'm going to show you I did indeed make eight of them, and I used predominantly scrap yarn. I'm going to start showing them now. So this was, the top was like a Noro yarn, and so you have that kind of striping effect. For the bottoms, I predominantly used like peaches and cream cotton, um, and I didn't stuff them very heavily because I knew that I was going to hang them, and that would help floof out the top. Um, the pattern calls for you to make a separate stem and then a separate top and then you stitch them together and then you, when you have just a few stitches left, you stuff it. Um, I found the pattern to be very forgiving. So if I have just scraps of yarn, like this one was definitely a scrap here. Scraps work really well because even if you don't have the full count, all that will happen is that your mushroom will be a little bit more bulbous and maybe not as flat. Um, but that's how they are in nature too, even though in nature they're not blue. Um, in the past, I have put little dots and circles and patches on my mushrooms. This time, I just wanted them to kind of speak for themselves. And I am hanging them using some very thin hemp thread, some like waxed hemp thread. This one has some really kind of scratchy wool underneath instead of a cotton. So I found that to work really well. I love how this one turned out. Um, the top is Red Heart Unforgettable. And I haven't been stuffing the, the feet very much. Um, I figure again, since it's an ornament, it doesn't really need it. It's just gonna hang. And if it's a little wonky, that's okay because you find in nature mushrooms kind of sticking out from odd places and at all kinds of interesting angles. 
This is number seven. And you see some of them are just a little bit differently shaped than each other. And that is more than fine. And then our eighth is right here. So I had a lot of fun using up some scraps. Now there is one more thing that I thought these mushrooms needed and that was a little friend to go with them because what use is calling it a toadstool if you can't have a little toad to go with it? Oh my goodness, so here is my little toad. Um, I made a frog off of the same tutorial from Complicated Knots and I played yarn chicken with a little bit of, this is like a Malabrigo, I think worsted. I had just the tiniest little bit left. I stuffed him with a cotton ball, just one like undone cotton ball. And then I used some vintage mother of pearl buttons and I had to undo the, um, the black yarn to, to be able to, to thread it through properly to get his little eyeball. But I'm not gonna make a, eight of these to give away, but I needed a little frog, a little toad to go on my Christmas tree. And then at the top, we actually have an owl. So we will have to hide the little toad from the owl during Christmas time. He'll have to maybe sit under a toadstool uh, to make sure that the owl does not find him. So I will say last year, actually the very first time I made one of these mushrooms, I did the top in a solid red and I did a couple of little circles on top to make it a proper toadstool and I took it to an ornament exchange. That thing was fought over. So highly recommend, they are super cute. All the patterns again are gonna be linked below, but I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, if you are enjoying this type of content, um, like, share, comment, subscribe, bell notifications, all those things are super encouraging to me as I continue to grow in this YouTube adventure. And thank you to all my subscribers who have hopped along with me. Um, if I am not your cup of tea, thank you so much for listening this long. I hope I will see you again. And in the meantime, have a Merry Christmas.